South Korea has been engulfed by a storm over working hours, and the world paying attention to a Korean culture of death by overwork and what looks like a battle between business interests and those who've been fighting to achieve work-life balance. Let's wind back a little to last week, when the government announced a set of measures to reform the country's 52-hour workweek system, which has divided opinion since being introduced in 2018, forcing employers to limit work to 40 hours plus up to 12 hours overtime per week. Even 52 hours drew surprise from Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman when he visited Seoul in 2018, as he commented, that is not good for a balanced life. Now, the proposed reform would allow companies to increase the maximum weekly work hours to 69, though still having to maintain an average of 52. In theory, it sounds appropriate for industries that deal with a sudden rush of orders that have to be met so they can stay competitive, for instance. But there's been a fierce backlash from labor unions as well as the so-called MZ generation, referring to millennials and Generation Z. Younger people have been raising their voices online, concerned that South Korea is slipping backwards rather than moving with global trends towards a shorter working week and flexibility in terms of place of work. Global media have picked up on this, with Fortune's headline reading, Forget the four-day work week in South Korea. It's proposing a maximum work week of almost 70 hours. And Australia's ABC went into detail on the Korean term for dying from overwork, Quarosa, which was coined in the 1970s but has remained a problem even since the 2018 reform, such as among delivery drivers. It's been repeatedly noted too, South Korea is already among the OECD's top five or worst five, depending on how you look at it, when it comes to working hours. Around 200 more than the OECD annual average in 2021 and 566 hours more than Germany, which still manages to maintain its reputation for high productivity. But is this plan even going to come to fruition? For a start, it's strongly opposed by opposition parties that hold a majority in the National Assembly, where the proposal's set to be sent for approval in June or July. And the plan may be a little different by then, as President Yoon sung yeol on Tuesday asked for a review paying close attention to the opinions of the MZ generation. And what this whole situation has highlighted is the demand for reforms in order to adapt to a post-pandemic world and a rapidly changing industrial landscape, as long as workers can trust that they don't have to pay with their lives for the freedom of business operations.